This is 2022 IMO problem three. Okay, so we are given a positive integer k and a set S of odd numbers, odd prime numbers. So we want to prove the statement that if you want to arrange the prime number on the circle such that any laboring pair, the product would be in this form. Yeah. So if you can find that configuration, the claim is that there's only one such configuration. It cannot be more than one. All right. So why don't you think about it? Try to understand the problem and try to prove it. Okay. When you're ready, let's continue with the solution. Okay. Here we're going to use induction. We're going to induct on the size of S, the prime numbers. Okay. Of course, the base condition is very straightforward. If we only have two primes, then because we don't care about symmetry, you know, there's only one such configuration for two primes you put on a circle, right? So that's obviously is true. Now, and then the induction steps, we're going to assume that the step is true for the size s less or equal to n up to some positive integer n, right? We need to show that is also true if the size of s is n plus 1. Yeah, if we're able to do, do that, and then we prove by induction. Now here, what we're going to start is that let's assume there is some valid con configuration for n plus 1 prime numbers, right? So we claim that we are done if, for any such configuration, we can find another configuration with n primes in, you know, in this uh, set, right? Because our induction assumption is that for size n, the statement is true. There's only one configuration at the most, you know, ignoring the symmetry, like a reflection and the rotation, right? So here we must uh, um, admit that uh, for n plus 1, there is also 1, right? Okay, so that's uh, the main strategy here. Okay, so for now we're going to start with the configuration for n plus 1 element. Okay, so this S, this C, n plus 1, meaning a valid configuration arrangement of uh, you know, those prime numbers. In these prime numbers, this S, we assume that it's n plus 1, right? So what do we do is, in this configuration, let's find the greatest prime numbers, because all the prime numbers are distinct, right? So there must be a greatest number. Let's call it R, okay? So this R, this is the greatest number, yeah? Among the set, yeah? Greatest in S, right? And let PQ be two of its neighbors, all right? So, and we're gonna assume P is smaller, right? Or can you assume Q is smaller? Doesn't really matter, you know, this is for the convenience, okay? So PQR in this order. R is the greatest among all, right? And this configuration is valid, which means what? Which means any pair, the product, would be in that form, right? So in other words, in this case, P and R as a pair, you can have some integer x1. And Q and R as a pair, the product, you're going to have another number x2, right? Of course, because we assume P smaller than q, smaller than r, so x1 must be smaller than x2, right? That's obvious, all right? So notice that we can do, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 4 on both equations. Let's give you an example here, right? So what we get is do some algebra, 4pr, right, equal 4x1 squared plus 4x1 plus 4k, right? I'm going to complete the square here. This is 2x1 plus 1 square plus 4k minus 1. So let's assume this is s square plus, you know, this u, all right? Now, similarly, we can also say that 4qr is going to equal another integer t plus u. So what is s and t? S is 2x1 plus 1, so in other words, xt are odd numbers, right? So s smaller than t are odd numbers, 
yeah so here u equal 4k plus 1 st are odd numbers with this now we claim that both numbers must be less than 2r remember r is the largest of the prime numbers right why because 4pr yeah because uh, p is smaller so this must be smaller than 4r square which is 2r square right so s cannot be bigger than 2r right that's good to know okay so now what we do is we're going to look at this equation one and equation two and uh, we're going to do the two minus one what do we get here is four q minus pr equal t square minus s square equal t plus s times t minus s right notice that r is a prime number yeah and t plus s because two odd number add up to this must be even number and t minus s must be even number right here r is a prime number so either r divides t plus s or r divides t minus s right now however i claim that this is not possible why here's the argument okay so if that is the case t minus s is odd number uh, is an even number so it must equal to 2r times another constant k k is some integer greater or equal to 2. however earlier we said that r and r is the largest so that s and t are less than 2r which means that t minus s must also less than 2r right but here we said that t minus s equal 2r plus k times k yeah because the, this is a prime number yeah and with this equation here so this is not possible because this will make the, the whole thing greater than greater or equal to 4 All right not possible so let's cross out this possibility so we're gonna have t plus s must equal r times the constant but since t plus s is even number so it must be 2r r is a prime number here this is a prime number here times another k uh, for k some integer greater or equal to one right this is greater or equal to one yeah okay and now two smaller number when they do the summation they can be 2r but they cannot be 4 so this k has to equal to 1 because if k is not equal to 1 the minimum is 2 but then there will be 4 you know two smaller numbers than 2r cannot add up to 4 so k must equal to 1 so in other words t plus s must equal to 2r okay so that's the conclusion we have all right so the key here is that r is a prime number okay so with that let's look at what is the product of p times q right of course we're going to uh, earlier we make the argument that uh, with these since r is a prime so we argue that uh, t plus s equal to r right and the t minus s cannot be in you know a multiple of r's because they're too small yeah so now with that let's look at uh, what is p times q right so here with this equation one two let's multiply them together so i have 16 p q r square equal uh, one and two right multiply together so s square plus u t square plus u to some algebra here that's going to equal s t square right plus u times s square plus t square plus u square right yeah and then we want s plus t equal to r we want to take advantage of this fact here right so what do we do we're going to turn this s st square st square plus u times 
s plus t square, yeah, minus 2st, right? Plus u square, okay? So you call s t square plus here is going to be u 2r square, yeah, minus 2rt, we're going to say minus u 2st plus u square, yeah? And if you look at these three terms here, they can combine to s square. So it's u times 2r square plus, yeah? So the other one will be st plus u, the uh, minus of this is a negative sign here. Okay, let negative here. All right. Square. All right, great. So what we do, we are interested in 4PQ. Here is a 16 PQR square. So you're going to divide 4R square here, 2R square here, right? And here will be U times 2R square plus ST minus U square, okay? That would equal to U plus, this is something square, right? 2R ST minus U square, right? So we know that PQR integers so this must some integer square here, right? So is in the right form. In other words, PQ is going to be valid labor to each other if we remove R, right? So here's the key observation. This is in the right format. Some integer square plus U. And uh, so PQ can be valid neighbor if we remove R here. The original set is n plus 1. Here is s minus r, the set would be equal m. By the induction assumption, there's only one valid configuration here. Since for a valid c, n plus 1, we get a valid cn. So we conclude that when the size is n plus 1, there's only at most one such configuration satisfied the conditions. All right, that's it for the induction. We completed it. All right, so hopefully you follow the steps and enjoy the video. And thank you, and please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.